Hey folks, this is a slightly different video from me um, as I've been wanting to do some basic tutorials on common list for a while but I've realized I'm really gonna have to wind back and just start with getting a development environment set up. So what this is video is going to be for is going to be setting up the essentials. So we're going to install an editor called Emacs. Emacs is a text editor but it's a very extensible one um, and we are going to add an extension to it called Slime. And Slime, combined with Emacs, is one of the nicest common list development environments there is. For me, personally, I find it the nicest programming environment I've used. Um, we're going to learn how to set these things up. We're going to learn how to install common lisp. Obviously, we're going to need that. We're also going to install something called Quick Lisp. Quick Lisp is the package management solution for common lisp and what it's going to do it's going to take all the tedium and trickiness out of downloading libraries and installing them and will let you focus on just playing with ideas so this video is going to go through these basics and then other videos will look at the hows and whys of these decisions and how we'll use this stuff to make cool things right let's get started okay so the first place to start is getting hold of emacs emacs is your editor that you'll be using so let's go get hold of that we search for Emacs, in fact let's search for Emacs Windows, that's probably going to get us better results. Yep, there we go. The second link down there is getting Emacs. If you click this and then get the pre-compiled version from the FTP site. And again scroll right down. And you can get the latest version which is down here. Which I'm going to get the 32-bit version and that's right here. So we click that, we'll see that things start in downloading. Now. I've already got this downloaded to save some time on this video I'm just going to cancel this now and go to that. What you're going to want to do is go and take that zip file and extract it and to keep things simple we're going to extract them straight to the C directory. So here's what it looks like once it's extracted you get an emacs-24.3 directory inside there and inside bin is the executable you run to make it go. So run emacs.exe is what we need to run. Now we need to add this path to our environment variables and also we need to set up home for Emacs as well. So what I've done is rather than try and use the users my documents kind of folder and all that stuff I've created a directory called home under C and this is going to be my home for Emacs. So if you click on Windows and then right click on computer and properties if you go to advanced system settings and then environment variables you can go down here and find the path variable. Double click on that to edit it and go to the beginning and paste that path from where we were for C Emacs hyphen 24.3 slash bin. Put a semicolon which separates it from the other items, that standard notation for the path variable, and click OK. We also need a home variable. So if we type home and C home, click OK. All right, okay your way back out of that and close this window. You now have Emacs installed. It doesn't need to be installed in the standard way, it's just an extract and run. Um, this is nice because you can use it quite portably. If we now look for run Emacs, we can see it there and hitting return, you've got Emacs running. I quite like to pin the program to my taskbar at this point, so I don't have to worry about that again. And this is set up enough for now. We'll come back to this soon. Now Emacs is not like many ideas you will have used before, it is a general text editor which is actually a Lisp program in itself which you can extend to your heart's desires, you can customize everything. It makes for a very powerful editor but one with a slightly sleep learning curve, especially seen as all the shortcuts you're used to are completely different in Emacs. If you're a Vim person by any chance, which is um, one of the other common console based text editors, also fantastic. You can look for Slim V. This is another um, version of Slime, which is going to help us with our common Lisp development. I'm not a Vim guy myself, um, so I can't help you on getting that set up, but I'm sure someone else has set up a video to show how that's done. Right, for now, let's close Emacs and let's get back to the business at hand. Next thing we're going to need is SBCL. Again, this is one I've already downloaded and I've thrown here. But if you need to get it yourself, you'll want to go search for SBCL. Second link down is download. Now, SBCL is an implementation of Common Lisp. So, Common Lisp is a standard of 
a language. It's like C is a standard. And you can have many implementations of C, you can have many implementations of Common Lisp. So this one I've picked because it's got an excellent compiler, it generates fast code and its error messages are brilliant. Um, they can really help you nail down problems that sometimes slip through on other implementations. As someone who was learning, SBCL was very helpful for me. Now, SBCL Windows port is relatively recent. Um, so as you can see, the 64-bit version is still in progress. So you can, it, while it will work, you can still, you can expect some things not to be perfect. There is a port that's been done, but it's an earlier version. This is 1.1 dot four and it has some better threading support under windows um, again we're not going to need it for this we just want to get up and running so we'll take the 32-bit version click on that it'll go to source forge and begin downloading again I've already downloaded this so I'm going to cancel and go back to the other directory so once you've got it downloaded double click on it click run this is really simple install accept the license and then browse and pick a sane path. So I'm just going to do SBCL. We have to mess around with less things and click OK. Next and install. And in a few seconds, oops, once we've taught it to do it, this will be done. Right, Lisp is installed. OK, so we've got our language and we've got our editor. Now we're going to install something called Quick Lisp. Quick Lisp is a fantastic piece of kit. It is a a package for Common Lisp that allows you to pull down and install other libraries and packages and handles all the dependencies, all the installing, updating, it is a godsend because before that was around, having to manage those things ostensibly by hand was a pain and it was something that actually caused me to stay away from Lisp for a while, it was just too fiddly for me to get into while I was still trying to learn the fundamentals of the language. So we need to get hold of it. Um, that's easy to do. Again, we just go for a Google Quick Lisp. Click on the Quick Lisp beta. It's been in beta forever and it works brilliantly, so I wouldn't worry about that. You need to download this file, quicklisp.lisp. Just click on it, that will download. And then we are going to follow some instructions. So here's mine right there in C Home. So I am going to run CMD and I am going to cd to that directory so that's C, I've got to remember what system I'm on home and then we're going to run our lisp which is sbcl and let me remember the thing, let's load quicklisp.lisp this is going to load this lisp file into our image and we're in, OK so the first thing we need to do is install Quick Lisp permanently. So every time that we run SBCL, we run our Lisp, we have Quick Lisp available to us um, because that just makes things a lot easier. So we're going to follow these instructions going Quick Lisp hyphen Quick Start colon install. Oops, close parentheses and return. This is now going to go off, fetch all the files we need and install them. Okay, so now it's there. We need to make sure that it's used every time, like we said before. So we're going to now go add to init file. And that's now added itself to our SBCL um, configuration file that's now lived in C Home. So that's cool. That's done. And now we're going to get hold of something called Slime. So Quick Lisp is going to allow us to download Slime straight from inside Lisp itself. Now, this console that we're using, I thought I'd mention because it, you might have come across this already. It's a bit crap. Um, it's really not meant to be how you interact with Lisp. I mean, if you're doing development with Lisp and you're doing it with a text editor on just sitting there and a, another window open with your with your um, image running, um, it's just not very pleasant. If you're doing all your development by copy and paste, Either that's the way you enjoy working, and that's grand, or you haven't played with Slime yet. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to install Slime, and we're going to see what happens when we use it. We're going to quick load. 
this is how you download and install libraries in Lisp now. Quick Lisp hyphen slime hyphen helper. And there it is off installing. Slime, as I haven't really explained what Slime is, Slime is an extension for Emacs. And what it does is make the development really seamless. It allows you to easily recompile the functions you're using right into the running Lisp image without anything stopping, without any copy paste. It blends the language with the editor in a way that's quite hard to explain until you had a play with it. So trust me, it's good fun. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to mark this stuff here. We're going to copy these. I have to mark it because it's strange terminology in this shell. Copy. And we need to paste this in our .emacs file. Now we don't have one of these yet. The .emacs file lives in your home directory. So here. And it's how you configure Emacs. So like I said, Emacs is a Lisp program. Um, and it's configured using Lisp. So let's load up Emacs. Run this. Here we are. Now we need to create our .emacs file. So we're going to create a new file, which is control xf. We'll get rid of this stuff. Tilde, which means home, .emacs. And then we're going to paste with control y. And those are the lines that QuickLisp told us to paste into our .emacs file. So we've copied them from here, we've pasted them in here. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the line and delete these. Just tidy everything up. And then we're going to save it, which you hold down control, XS, and that saves it. And now so what happens is every time the Emacs starts, it runs the .emacs file. So it runs that little script, which configures it. Something went wrong there. Run. There we go. So now it's run those lines that are in our .emacs file. What we're going to do now is create a little test program because we are now set up. This is your entire development. So we are going to create a file with control X F. That was control held down and then X F. I'm going to go back to the home directory because that's where I'm going to shove things. And I'm going to do test.lisp. And this is just a standard text file right now. And I'm going to split this view by doing control X3. Oops, I held down control while I was doing the three. So control X3, there we are. And then typing slime. And now in this other, but in this other frame, we're going to load up Lisp. So there is common Lisp running and we can test it. We can do simple addition. So plus one, two, three return. There's a number, there's our result. Now our Lisp file over here, we can write things in. So let's define a function called test fun. It's going to take two arguments, X and Y. It's going to add them together, X, Y, and close them. Now what I can do is I can just compile this single function. So if I do hold down control and then press C twice, that's control C, control C. You can see it's said over here, compiling test fun. And now I can write test fun here and pass in two arguments, four and five. Oops, four, five, press return. And there's our result, it's added them together. What I can do though is without restarting Lisp, without having to mess around with anything else, go redefine the function in our .lisp file, run control C, control C again, and it's updated it. So now when we run test fun, we see that that change has taken effect. This provides a really nice iterative method of uh, development because you can flip between the two. You can do experiments in this right hand side playing with ideas and then you throw them into your, the, the text side and make them into functions and then you compile those functions You go back experiment with them and it's back and forth is subtle but really strikes you when you have to use a language that doesn't have this kind of development and that really is, I, I'm scratching just the tip of the iceberg at the moment because there's a load of things you can do with slime but I think for this video we've got enough so I'm gonna call this done and I will be back with more videos soon in the future cheers